Hey everyone, welcome back to the Experimental Aircraft Channel. I'm Brian Wallstrom, and in today's episode, Bob Thayer of EAA Chapter 309 in North Carolina will talk with us about his scratch-built Hummelbird by Hummel Aviation. If you're not familiar with Hummel Aviation and the Hummelbird, they've been around for many years and they've got three different models available. Uh, one of them is the Hummelbird, the Ultra Cruiser, and also the H5. If you'd like to find out more about this kit aircraft, check out flyhummel.com. This is one of those aircraft that has been on my bucket list. It's an all aluminum, all metal aircraft. It's very small, looks like it's very easy to build, doesn't take up a lot of space in the hangar or the garage or workshop. Uh, one of these days I would like to build one of these. Interview with Bob coming up next. Today we're here with Bob Thayer and he's building a Hummel, a Hummel bird. He's building a Hummel bird and if you could tell us uh, how you, what made you decide on building this aircraft and where you're at with it and where you okay. plan to be, what's your mission and all that good stuff. Okay, sure will. I've been working on this project for a grand total a little over 10 years now. Okay. And uh, originally the reason I chose this design was that I wanted to scratch build an airplane. Sure. And my original intentions was to build it in my garage. And uh, there weren't too many airplanes that would actually fit in my garage. So this is the uh, airplane inside. It's small, it's small enough to fit in your garage, yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. And uh, it is entirely scratch built. Uh, the only parts that came from Hummel Aviation are the welded parts. Okay. I didn't trust my own welding, so. Right, so this is really a plans okay. built. It's a plans okay. built. Right. Very good. And, uh, and which, which engine, they still using the half Volkswagen on this, is that correct? correct? They're using the half Volkswagen. We have the engine sitting right over here in the corner. Okay, let's take and, a look at that. Okay, we'll go take a look at that in a moment. And uh, we built up the uh, the half EW from uh, various from their, parts. From their plans? Or well, it, which? I got about three or four different sets of plans. Okay. And, uh, I know there's lots of options these days for building Volkswagens or half Volkswagens. Right, and uh, we uh, made a blend of those different plans, okay. uh, but it's a lot of uh, uh, Hummel Engines plans. Okay, so you kind of picked and choose from what you saw was more interesting or more reliable or Correct. better and, engineered. Right, and I got a lot of the parts from Scott Kassler, who's uh, the real half VW expert. Scott Castle, yeah, he's out in California, correct? Uh, yes. Out in Arizona. Arizona, right. okay. I've heard, right. I've heard a lot of good things about him. Yeah, it's in Coolidge, Arizona. And, uh, uh, we got uh, a few parts from another vendor, and uh, one, uh, one thing we did was make our own propeller. Yeah. And that was a project in itself. You made your so, own uh, propeller replicator or copier right, or whatnot, right? right. We okay. made a uh, 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 copier uh, using some plywood and put a little router in it to, to cut the propeller. Use a router for it? Right. Okay. So that ate a little And what's, what's the mission for this plane when you're all said and done with it? We're just to kind of toodle around the airport or what? Sure, uh, take it to fly-ins and okay. just uh, for local flying. Um, I'm enjoying the building process. Uh, uh, I kind of worry about the flying part when I get there. Yeah, <laughs> so, sure. That's uh, a lot of people just get it built first right, and then learn to fly it. Right. Yeah. And I just enjoy coming to work in this hangar. So. so, Bob, we're on this plans built only. Mm -hmm. Where do you start? Is there like a method to the madness, or do you, can you start anywhere on the wings or the tail or the fuselage? Is there a suggestion or uh, the the plans and the the associated manual that come with the plans did have a. Uh, process you go through it's basically you start with the fuselage however I built the wings first okay you built the, the wings first Correct. and those are stored uh, in a one safe of place up there and the other one's right over there okay and uh, they're stored in a safe place and <clears throat> after the wings were complete started on the fuselage and uh, basically what you do is put the bulkheads on a beam that goes right down the middle and like a like a four by four, you have to create the beam to make sure it's straight and right. We created the beam. You create the beam first, right? Okay. And actually, John did most of the work on the beam. And that's your starting point. And that was the starting point, and it goes right through the middle of the airplane. You attach the bulkheads, and after the bulkheads are secured, you start adding the stem. 
and the skin gives it the stiffness. How many bulkheads are there on this? Three, uh, four? Into the tail? We've got the firewall. We've got the bulkhead right here where the instruments go. This is the seat back in here. And uh, uh, bulkhead back here, and there's one right in the middle. Okay. And then a turtle deck is going to go right over top of this. And, and again, this is the Hummel. It's a Hummel bird. The Hummel bird. So this is the ultralight version of it? No, no it's the. Uh, uh, it's not the ultralight version. The, the ultra, next. The next one up. The it's next not, one up. Okay. It. Uh, it is the original Hummel bird that was built by Maury Hummel. Maury Hummel. First. I saw those videos when they first came out when he started putting these together. Right. Yeah. Right. And. Uh, so you had you had make a bunch of wood formers to make the flanges around and so correct, forth, right? Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. Good old scratch building. Get, get old scratch building. What, uh, just as an example of how lightweight this is and um, how light it's built, what's the thickness of the skin as an example for this fuselage? Um, the, 020, uh, 025? Uh, the skins right here are 025, 025. if I remember correctly. And uh, the bulkheads were 040. Okay, so they're, they're pretty substantial for the they're bulkheads. Pretty, uh, substantial. The, uh, uh, bulkheads in the Ultra Cruise that you mentioned before, the ultralight version, are much thinner. Sure. And this is a heavier airplane. But this airplane is, uh, uh, the design is for 6Gs plus and minus. So it's That's pretty incredible. Yep. That's incredible. That's yep. incredible. Yep. And wow. it will cruise, I think, at around 105. Yeah? Optimistically. Well, that'll be nice. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's the spar carry through there. Right, this will be the main gear, and the nose gear is mounted in front of the firewall. Okay, so this one has the main gear mounted directly to the spar itself. Correct. And is there a what do they use for suspension? Is it a spring or bungee or uh, no suspension? Just the the air on the tires. Just the air in the tires. The tires should be inflated about eight nine pounds. Okay. And that gives you a little bit of a cushion, but. Uh, uh, this, there is no suspension in this particular gear. Hummel Aviation does make another gear that, um, that has springs in it. And, uh, but I chose to, uh, uh, More uh rigid mount. solid, solid gear. Right. And the people that have used it, uh, uh, it works satisfactorily for them. So. Okay. I'm going to take a look at your, your cockpit here and what, do you know what the limitations are of height and weight for this as far as the pilot is concerned? Uh, the Very ideal, nice instrument panel, by the way. I like the symmetry of it. Yeah, it's real, real, real simple. It's got the basic minimum uh, instruments. Uh, it was originally designed for a 170-pound pilot. It was designed for a 170-pound pilot? Correct. Okay. And, uh, and, what, and how high, what's it, the height? Six uh, foot, maybe? The height is uh, right around uh, six feet. Okay. I understand there may be a few pilots as much as 6'2", with some modifications. Does this canopy tilt to the side or back or front uh, or it what? It tilts to the side. Side tilt, okay. Tilt this way. Very nice. Hey, you mentioned earlier about the engine, which is a half Volkswagen conversion from several different sources, Correct. ideas. Correct. So here it is now. Correct. And, and it's uh, pretty much built and ready to go? It is built, ready to go. Actually, it was built uh, about eight or nine years ago. Okay. And uh, we've tested it and run it. We ran it for about an hour and a half, and it runs great. So it's uh, been pickled then, in a sense, yep, and just right. and stored. Okay, right. long-term storage until you're done. But oh, very uh, nice. And this is propeller that uh, that we made. Oh yeah. Okay. And uh, what I, what type of wood did you use on? I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> uh, I can't remember, to tell you the truth. Okay, it's been a little this, while. Yep. We built this propeller back when we built the engine. It's been quite a while. But the, the propeller engine combination runs great. Okay. Uh, the engine starts uh, on the first or second pull of the prop. There's yeah. no starter. You have to hand start it. But and it you is, chose to use a magneto? Is that what I see correct. there? Yeah. It, it does uh, have a single magneto. Uh, however, before it flies, I'm going to take the heads off and send them to Scott Kassler in okay. Arizona and let him drill some additional two additional uh so you want to have dual you want to have dual ignition so on it. Dual ignition now use electronic ignition now are you going to keep it as a hand prop or are you going to add electric start or you don't i'm gonna keep it as a hand prop keep it as a hand prop keep okay the light down okay and which i think there's probably options for mm -hmm. carburetors are which option are you choosing for your your um, build 
Uh, the uh, the carp rider I've chosen is a zenith. Okay. And I got that from Scott also. He's and supplying that. Right. He's supplying that. And most uh, half EWs do use the zenith. There's a few modifications where they have some half VWs, uh, I think on legal eagles where there's two carburetors, but this will have one carburetor. Okay. And again, what size, what CC motor is this with these heads uh, and let's see, cylinders? It's half of a 2180 VW. Half of a 2180. It'll run an open exhaust. Uh, I'm probably going to get some exhaust that loop around and point back. But okay. these are, uh, I think these exhausts were actually used on the Ultra Cruiser. Uh, but I, I will change the exhaust and have carburetor heat. Okay. Very good. So building an all-metal airplane from plans, I'd like to just share with people like what kind of investment you've had to do as far as getting any special tools or just kind of basic sheet metal tools or what have you had to get? It was all very, very simple. I bought a bandsaw and electric drill, uh, a battery-powered electric drill, and naturally Clico pliers and Clicos, but okay. uh, it, was, it was a minimal amount of tooling. Is there many different rivet sizes for and Clicos and so yeah, forth, or is it just like a couple different sizes yeah, they two use? Two different sizes. Two different Clicos sizes? And, okay. Uh, uh, most of the rivets are eighth inch rivets. Okay. So uh, that's pretty, pretty standard. Bob, thanks Bob for taking the time to give us a quick tour of your airplane and your engine and uh, why you chose this and so forth. I appreciate it. Okay, glad to do it. All right, thank thanks you. Thanks a lot. Okay, guys, that's the show for today. Again, you can go to flyhummel.com for more information about the kits, as well as they can be found on YouTube under Hummel Aviation. They have literally about a dozen videos there to help you put your kit together. Again, subscribe and like this video, and we'll see you in the next one. Scratch built hummerbird. Hummerbird. Hummer hummerbird.